Hi, and welcome to Quarter Tone Harmony. I'm Kurt, and today I'm going to talk about the musical significance of circular interval progressions beyond the circle of fifths. It's fair to say the circle of fifths is the basis of modern Western music. The diatonic circle of fifths progression is a mainstay. Even when you don't hear the whole thing, pieces of it, like 251 and 514, are everywhere. The diatonic scale itself is made by cutting across the circle of fifths with the tritone, and the tuning system in which we hear that diatonic scale is created by adjusting the complete chromatic circle of fifths to match up with seven octaves. The circle of fifths is everywhere in our music, literally part of every note in standard tuning. I've always wondered though, are there other circles? The circle of fifths is based on the third harmonic overtone. Can we do the same thing with a different overtone? I've been experimenting with quarter tone for a while now. And one thing that quarter tone has is a lot of good overtone approximations that are missing from 12 tone, notably the 11th and the 13th, as well as a better approximation to the 7th. In my first two videos, I show these overtones can be used to make good functional chords and strong progressions. I had to wonder, can they be used for circles too? Come with me and hear what I found. I show in my first two episodes the general conception that quarter tone can only be used for grading or atonal music is not really true, and you can make smooth and pleasant music with quarter tones as well. However, if you don't want to hear them, or you don't like what I do with them, then skip ahead to the new theory chapter, because I've got some good material there in traditional 12-tone tuning. We'll start with the circle of sevens, the lowest of these three harmonics. For this, I ended up using dominant seventh chords. With each step, we'll go down by five quarter tones, the stronger direction in the previous episode's test. Five and 24 are relatively prime, so the circle goes through all 24 notes, and I'll use eighth notes so it doesn't take so long. Start with C, then A half sharp, then G, and so forth and so on until we get back to C. We'll finish with a major triad to try for a nice ending. Ready? Let's test it. Oh, that's pretty cool. And what do those last three chords sound like? I don't know about you, but that sounds like a strong cadential progression to me. It's actually quite similar to the dominant test for degree nine in the previous episode, just using the dominant seventh chord on F instead of a major seventh. I thought last episode's test was kind of an okayish progression, while this one seems quite strong. It's like being on the circle of sevenths makes it a stronger dominant. Hmm. Okay, we've got a nice progression. Anything we can do with it? Well, any place we stop is a cadence, so maybe it's good for modulation. Let's try to go to F half flat, conveniently the fourth key in the sequence comes out in second inversion, so let's put in a cadence to get to a rest chord. Four chords for a fairly smooth, distant quarter tone modulation. Not bad, huh? How about runs of the circle of sevens to emphasize chords in a progression? We can make a kind of odd progression going back from F half flat to C. So F half flat down by harmonic 11th to B, and then to C. A little abrupt. Now let's tack on a circle of sevenths run in front of each chord. Now it's pretty slick. And one more trick. You might have noticed if you were paying careful attention that every other chord on the circle of sevenths is from the circle of fifths going backwards. So, any number of steps on the circle of fifths plus twice that number of steps on the circle of sevenths makes a circular turnaround progression. Just that final cadence works, much like 251 and 451 do. We can very easily do longer ones too, though. If this is 
all too. Happy, happy, happy for you. You can do the same thing with minor chords and mixed field chords for a more somber effect. The reverse circle of sevenths works too. Not as strong to my ears, but still pretty good. And there's still a cadence on the end. That's a chord on the fifth degree acting as a predominant. Interesting. I could go into musical effects on the reverse circle of sevenths, but in the interest of time, I'm going to move on. So we know the circle of sevenths work. How about the circle of elevenths? For this one, I used a harmonic thirteenth chord because it is a neat trick when you're moving by harmonic elevenths using a harmonic thirteenth chord. All the parts stay in the same field, so no field check. Once again, we go through all 24 notes and we'll end on a major triad. Oh ho! That one works too! And what are those last three chords? I do believe we bagged ourselves another strong cadential progression. Not so much a surprise, because that was actually a relatively strong one in last week's dominance test, but perhaps even stronger when it's on the circle of 11s. Does the modulation trick still work? Three chords and we're in G half sharp minor. Max Rager, eat your heart out. Two steps on the circle of 11s combined to make a semitone, so you can use it as a passing chord. The strength of the circle of 11s helps disguise the field shifts. It's harder to use the circle of 11 for cyclic turnarounds because it doesn't get along as well with other circles. But you can use three steps on the circle of 11 plus three steps on the circle of 7. You can combine these in any order. I like alternating because it ends up moving by major thirds. The reverse circle of 11 sounds a little off to me. Maybe it's some voice leading error I'm missing, perhaps one that hasn't even been discovered yet. Or it could be that the progression seems eager to get off the rails into the keys that we're going past. All the same, there's a strong cadential progression at the end. Next, the circle of thirteenths. For this, I ended up using a mix of minor and dominant seventh chords. Once again, the circle goes through all 24 notes and will end on a major triad. We have another winner! And those last three chords? Another strong cadential progression. We're batting a thousand. The reverse circle of sevenths also works, if not quite as well. And once again, there's a strong cadential progression at the end. So we're seeing a pattern here. All of these circular interval progressions generate strong progression and a variety of interesting musical effects. The circles run in both directions, but they have a preferred direction where they seem to work better. In all cases, as we return to the home chord, there's a strong cadential progression. So it seems we do indeed get many of the features of the circle of fifths from the circle of sevenths, and the circle of elevenths, and the circle of thirteenths. So having seen all that, I've got a new theory to propose. Circular dominance theory. According to circular dominance theory, a dominant chord is one that's returning to the home chord along a circle of overtones. A predominant chord is one that helps establish the home chord, the circle, or the direction for the dominant chord. The normal predominance for a given chord are the chord one step back on its circle 
and the chord one step forward from the tonic on its circle. However, most of the time dominants can borrow each other's predominance and it works out just fine. On the circle of fifths, in this traditional direction, you recover the standard rule. The dominant chord is the fifth degree, and its predominants are the chord one step back on the circle, the second degree, and the chord one step forward from the tonic on the circle, the fourth degree. According to circular dominance theory, though, we should get a strong cadence in the reverse direction. So the chord one step back from four is flat seven. How does that sound? This wasn't widely used in the common practice era, but it gets more used today. It's one of the hooks in Bridge Over Troubled Water and it's used in a lot of rock songs, but not nearly as strong a cadence as the usual ones involving the fifth degree. But remember how I said the diatonic scale was made by cutting across the circle of fifths with the tritone? For the major scale, we cut across after the first step on the circle of fifths. Cutting into other steps gives us various other white key modes. Maybe a progression on the circle of fourths would like a scale made that way using the circle force instead. So here's the circle of force. If we take that step after the first, if we take the skip after the first step, then we get this scale, modern Phrygian mode. And how does this cadence sound in modern Phrygian mode? Much stronger to my ear. Plus, in this scale, the fifth degree becomes clearly predominant. Now, one more point to make. Remember how in the reverse circle of sevens, a chord on the fifth degree was acting as a predominant? Now, let's look what this theory says about the circle of thirteenths. The preferred dominant is the tenth degree, and the chord one step back is, oh look, it's the fifth degree again. That's right. On both the reverse circle of sevens and the circle of thirteenths, the canonical dominant chord, a dominant seventh chord on the fifth degree, is acting as a predominant. It's not just the chord and the key that determine function. It's the chord and the key and the circle. Now hold on a minute, I hear you say. There's overtones in regular 12-tone tuning that could be used for circles. There's the interval of a third, the fifth harmonic. And there's the ninth harmonic. Well, a circle of thirds might be a little weird because it closes on the third chord, but, but a circle of ninths should work. Why haven't I ever heard of a circle of ninths? Good question. Let's take the same approach to the circle of ninths. Have a run of dominant seventh chords ending on a major triad. And let's listen. Those middle chords sound perhaps a bit odd, but what are those last three chords again? That sure sounds like a strong cadential progression to me, and with good reason, because it's a really well-known cadential progression. It doesn't have a name, because it wasn't widely used in the common practice era, but sometimes it's half-jokingly called the Mario Cadence, because it's a prominent role in the Mario Brothers games. And interestingly, there's not a good explanation for why it works and sounds the way it does. Well, I've got one for you. It's the closure of the circle of ninths. It gets used as a flourish at the end of songs sometimes, too. Close that circle, Whitney. Oh, she had such a voice. And what's the preferred dominant in that direction of the circle of ninths? Why, it's our old friend, the backdoor dominant. So now we've got an explanation of how the backdoor dominant lets us into the house. It's the preferred dominant for the circle of ninths. It looks like there is a circle of ninths, and it does get used. It just hadn't been identified. So I think circular dominance theory does let us move beyond the circle of fifths. It shows us how to produce fresh and accessible musical effects in quarter tones and helps provide a framework for understanding how modern popular music has moved beyond common practice era harmony by using the circle of ninths and the circle of fourths. Next week, I have a focus on just one chord, but not any chord. 
It's a wizard of a court with a chameleon personality and a myriad of uses. Plus, it has a lot to teach us about altered chords and an interplay between 12 tone and quarter tone. So hit like, hit subscribe, and hit notify. And tune in next episode for The Magic Chord.